This is the final third video for the protein assay writing assignment. In this video, I will go over the instructions for the table and the calculations that are going to be presented within that table itself. This will be the second part of the results section. So once you have created your protein standard curve in the form of a graph, you are then going to present the table with all your calculations for milk and high protein mixture that were uh, used as our test samples. Now before you do that you should have a narrative text describing the table and uh, what it is that you are going to be presenting within it. Once that is done you are going to have the first part of your table presenting the actual content of protein uh, that you calculate using your y equals mx plus b equation. This particular equation that you are using is the one that you got from your protein standard curves graph. The equation that you get after you plot your um, BSA dilutions against the absorbents are the, is the one that you are going to use to calculate the protein content in milk and high protein mixture. From this equation, you have the Y, which is the absorbance at 595 nanometer. This is your dependent variable. So this is the value that you are getting for your milk and high protein mixture um, using the Vernier's kit. You are going to use that uh, value that you have received and substitute it in place of the y and then solve for x which is going to give you your independent variable in the form of protein concentration in mix per mil. Now if you look at the label of these proteins uh, or these uh, contents for milk and high protein mixture you are going to see it in grams per a particular amount of a volume of milk or high protein mixture. You are going to be converting that number into mix per mil before you can compare it to the value that you receive. Also if you remember you diluted your milk and high protein mixture by 50 fold before you were able to um, get its absorbance within the linear range. So you have to make sure that you remember to multiply the number that you get after calculation for the x by 50 to take into account the dilution factor that uh, you had created for these mixtures. So make sure that once you have the x value figured out, you multiply that by 50 to get your final theoretical val uh, experimental value. Now once you have your experimental or calculated values for your milk and high protein drink, you are going to next compare these values to the uh, actual protein content that's expressed on the labels for these products. That expressed value is your theoretical value for milk and high protein uh, mixture. So you are going to basically get it by taking the number that you find on the label and then converting it from the units that it is presented, which is usually grams per milliliter, into milligrams per milliliter, which is uh, the units that we are going to be using. Once you have those numbers, you are ready to um, compare between them by doing a calculation called relative percent difference. In relative percent difference, you are basically looking at how different are the values that you got with your experimental calculation compared to the ones that are present on the label. To do that, you are going to take the absolute difference between the two values that you have, the theoretical compared to the experimental. You are going to then divide it by the average of theoretical and experimental values and multiply it by 100%. In doing that, you are going to get the number or the final number which is your relative percent difference. Ideally this RPD or relative percent difference value should be less than or equal to 5%. Once you have this value you're ready to uh, make your graph. So to make the graph 
you can go into an Excel uh, file and you are going to make uh, your columns labeled as such. You will only have two rows, one for each one of your samples. So one for milk and one for the high protein shake. The first thing that you must present in this table is the absorbance that you received from the Warnier's kit. So that's the absorbance um, that you got. It's at 595 nanometers. The second column is going to then look at the experimental value that you calculated with your y equals mx plus b equation. You want to make sure this is the final experimental value and not the one that you got before the dilution factor was taken into account. So the value that you had received for x using the y equals mx plus b multiplied by 50 is the value that will go in this column. The next column is going to contain the theoretical value. The theoretical value is the value that you um, received from the labels itself converted into mg per mil. Make sure the units for both these columns is in mg per mil. And finally, you'll have the column for relative percent difference. So here are some uh, pointers on how to then make sure that the table gets formatted the proper way. You can bold the headings of your columns and then you can select that uh, all the columns that you are going to be presenting within the table and select wrap text. This will allow you to see the entire heading for each one of those columns in one area without making your columns extremely long or too short uh, for your samples. Make sure that you also adjust the column width by moving the line as needed to make them how you uh, like to see them visually. And here is an example of that so that you can see high protein shake and milk in its entirety as well. Next, you are going to uh, format it by creating borders in the top row. And you will do that by going up to this little grid and then selecting all borders in the choices. Finally, you'll do the same for each one of the rows so that it was also gridded properly. Then you can select the entire area of the table itself and add a thick outside border that will give you the boundary for the table that you will be presenting. Now you're ready to input your numbers. Once you have input all the numbers for your absorbance, experimental and theoretical concentration, you now need to format them properly. Make sure they are formatted as numbers with the same number of significant figures. Here I used the Excel function to calculate the relative percent difference. If you wanted to do it this way, make sure that you are adding the parentheses as needed to separate each one of the functions uh, from the nominator and denominator and multiply by 100 at the end to get the percent difference and not just the difference itself. Once you have the values, you are now ready to, again, format them as numbers to make sure they are formatted properly. So in my case, I selected all the regions and I made sure that they were uh, formatted the way I needed. You are going to then copy and paste it um, wherever you need into your actual Word document. To format a cell, you go again, you select the areas that you want formatted. You then right click on your mouse and go to format cells and then format them as number with two decimal places and click on OK. The final table will look something similar to this and will contain the title and caption above the table. For the graphs and uh, figures, the caption and title go below the figure, but for the tables, they go above the figure. The narrative text for the table will be above this area.
This section will then be concluded with the conclusions presented at the end.